Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BSV TV. I'm your host, Sir Toshi, and on this show, we'll be defending the one and only truly genuine Bitcoin. The Bitcoin that Satoshi Nakamoto designed in his white paper as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system for the world. Let's get the disclaimers out of the way. So all the statements that you hear on this show are opinion and must only ever be taken as opinion. They are never to be taken as any form of advice, family, financial, sexual or otherwise. And on that note, let's sit back, relax, have some fun and enjoy the show. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and set your own fee on Streamanity. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I wasn't asked why I'm convinced. Craig is Satoshi. Um, I posted on, on Reddit. He signed in my presence uh, the private, using the private key from block one, block number one, the very first mined Bitcoin block uh, on a computer that I'm convinced had not been tampered with, on software I'm convinced that had not been tampered with, a message of my choosing. At Enchain, we've just funded a number of universities doing, so far, a test up to one gigabyte because it validates what we've already done independently. We've tested up to 380 gigabyte blocks. We have tested 1 million transactions a second and transaction sizes up to 20 megabytes. Super complex scripts, basically ones that can run operating systems. That's basically all of global commerce times about 50. On top of that, we can have complex scripts. On top of that, we can scale each of those transactions 1,000 times, which effectively means about a billion transactions per second, which means we can then have all derivatives, all complex trades. That means high frequency trading. It means everything that happens globally. Is the market that effectively BSV is going for, is that global e-commerce, which is currently valued at $29 trillion? No, that's too small. Buy and sell Bitcoin instantly at bsvgravity.com. And you can now book and pay for your winter holiday at skibsv.com. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Where do I gargle my start of the show? Rock and roll. Here we go. How's everybody doing? Hope everyone's doing well and had a uh, good Christmas and a Boxing Day and all that. I mean, let's get back into business. This is, uh, oh, well, what should I say? Welcome to Satoshi TV. Let me just check that I am live on Twitch. Make sure we're rocking and rolling. Frames per second. Live streaming. CPU looks good. Drop frames, that's counting down. Yeah, great stuff. Here we go, people. Rock and roll. So for, and for anybody who uh, doesn't know what we're looking at or it's anybody who might be watching my show for the first time, this is the story of Bitcoin expressed in one image. The, uh, the Genesis block was created on the 3rd of January 2009 and Bitcoin has just simply carried on. All it's done is it's scaled and scaled and scaled and that is it. Because the moment you, uh, the moment you tamper with Bitcoin, the moment it, you try to change anything, you centralize it and you crash its fundamental value as a currency to zero. Because any currency that has a central point of authority or control is fundamentally worthless and becomes nothing more than a token at best, most likely a security. Which is what Brad Garlinghouse is finding out with the XRP load of crap at the moment. So for any, uh, for any newbies, you might be looking at this going, oh, I don't get this, like, what's going on? So uh, all that happened with Bitcoin is that when it changed, Blockstream took the ticket with them. So they changed Bitcoin, but they were just like, yeah, we'll, we'll change Bitcoin, but we're not going to change the name. So they kept the ticker symbol, but however, they broke the chain of signatures, which, which keeps all the developers on the network uh, accountable. So it just means that no one can control it and no one can do anything on the network that nobody else wouldn't know about. This is why Blockstream now have complete control of BTC, which means the which means its current price of like £27,000 is a complete bubble. It's literally absolutely worthless. So when that happened, Bitcoin just simply continued and it took a, a new ticker symbol, which is BCH, but then Roger Ver and his crony mates thought they would then try and uh, control it by adding like cash shuffle, cash fusion, uh, adding checkpoints in, um, changing the protocol every six months, like make an absolute hash job of it. Anyway, 
totally control it. Like, nobody can build on it without their permission. Well, no one can build on it anyway because they're changing the protocol every six months. They're talking about governance tokens. Like, they need government. It's like, oh, we need centralization. No, you do not need centralization. The moment you centralize money, it becomes utterly worthless. This is why Bitcoin is completely decentralized. And Craig and Calvin just simply maintain the network that nobody can control. The moment, the moment you try to control it, it becomes fundamentally worthless. This is why all these douchebags like Blockstream and Ron Javert and his mates can tamper with the code. Because the code is open, but the moment you tamper with it, it becomes fundamentally worthless. As in like, it has no value whatsoever. Because they control it, which therefore means like, other parties aren't going to use it. So the best way to just well, the best way to uh, describe this really is that if uh, if China created a currency, America would just simply never use it due to political policy, and uh, and vice versa. If America created something, China would just simply never use it. So how can you agree to get all parties to use money? The money has to be fundamentally completely neutral. It's the neutrality which gives it its value, and neither BTC nor BCH <laughs> are uh, are neutral. They are privately owned, just like every other shitcoin on the entire market. But we'll get into that in just a minute. So let's go on with these figures, see what's going down. This is the crypto forecast, the strength of the system, the health of the network. So uh, we have got Bitcoin, which is BSV with 0.8% of the hash rate. Bcrash 1.3, CoolCoin 97.9. Network node, same as they were since the 15th of uh, November 2018, which was when uh, Bitcoin got its protocol backed under a new ticker, which was BSV. You got 2.4% of the nodes for Bitcoin, 10.1% for Bcrash, 87.5% for CoreCoin. Transactions, oh, it's like CoreCoin have just pipped us today, never mind. But uh, we got transactions on uh, Bitcoin, 43.6%. Hopefully all the uh, devs are having um, you know, uh, a nice pleasant time away over Christmas. Uh, we've got 6.7% on Bcrash. Oh, it looks like they must be enjoying maybe spending it in Japan or something like that. Who knows? And then there's a 49.7 for uh, for CoreCoin. You know, but you know, who cares? <laughs> um, block size 43.3 for uh, Bitcoin, 5% for Bcrash, and 51.7% for uh, CoreCoin. But they will change. So let's just play uh, spot the biggest block on Bcrash and let's see if Hathor are mining any blocks with data in it. looks like they are. Hathor has mined a block on uh, on Bcrash with 59.0 um, kilobytes in it. Uh, usually they're ski scooping up all the uh, empty blocks so that none of these shitcoin enterprises can uh, win the Coinbase, which is the, uh, which is the block reward. Uh, but we've got a, a 369 there from btc.com. Let's keep, see if we can see. Oh, a 707 from Antpool. Um, let's have a look, see if Hathor has mined any other blocks with data in. No. Okay, so we've just got a, uh, uh, a 707. Don't think they'll, I don't think they'll be able to top that. No. Uh, 409 is as close as they can get. And then we uh, look across the cool coin, and because they purposely give themselves a one megabyte restriction, which is what shit corners love, they're limited as to how much data they can put on the chain, which means it can't scale. <laughs> which means which means if not everybody could use it like nobody will use if not everyone can use it it is of no value to anyone that's pretty that's pretty much how it goes um so let's just uh, check out amory's coin as we do every day just for lulls because this absolutely cracks me up here we go six thousand blocks have been mined and this is uh the the bitching chain and this is armory and his money <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great, mate. So that's basically him trying to uh, develop his own money on uh, minimum wage, which uh, I think I worked out is about like $12 an hour he's living on, and he's trying to develop it on that. I mean, who he's working with is just like a, it's just hilarious. Uh, so we've got the bitching chain going up there, and then we've got Amory's coin. I mean, that, that will drop dead very time, uh, anytime soon. Uh, but the bitching chain, we've got Hathor mining 38.3% uh, of the overall. Uh, Blocks on the network. Then we've got Ample, which is like, you know, Bitmain. Don't know who via BTC is. Don't know who uh, BTC Top is, but they're a shitcoin enterprise. Same with BTC.com, because that's uh, that's Jihan. SBI Crypto are on there. I have no idea why. BTC.com and Binance. Yeah, all the, all the usual shit. We Hathor turning up the heat on Amory's coin. Oh dear, oh dear. Let's see what the blocks Hathor is mining. Hathor's mining blocks with data in it. Yeah, look. Four kilobytes, 15 kilobytes. 20 kilobytes. Ooh, 
I mean, what's the biggest block on uh, Armory's coin? Like 38 kilobytes. <laughs> oh dear, I mean, what a, what a joke. That's absolutely hilarious. All right, let's, uh, let's get back to business, back on these graphs then. Here we go. Place to spot the biggest block on Bitcoin. Uh, I can already see a, a 2.8 megabyte block by Tau. Uh, that's a relatively small one today. Mempool, a 4 megabyte block. I mean, again, you know, uh, B Crash and CoreCoin can't get anywhere near that. But I mean, we're usually looking at blocks that are sort of like, you know, at least in the tens, you know. Uh, Bitcoin hash rate by network, yeah, you've just seen that again. Like CoreCoin and B Crash will just simply stop overnight one day. Proof of work by network, again, the other two, they will just simply stop overnight. B Crash versus Bitcoin, B Crash versus Bitcoin proof of work, that's more like it. 14 or 50,000 times cheaper to transact on Bitcoin because Bitcoin is a peer to peer electronic cash system for the world. International trade is what it's for. It's currently 5.5% more profitable to mine a core coin because number go up because shit coiners don't really have a clue what they're doing. Daily average Bitcoin block size by network. Oh, core coin winning. Transactions by network, core coin just winning. Transactions per block, core coin just winning. Fees USD, Bitcoin smashing it. Fees Satoshi's Bitcoin smashing it. Uh, block reward ratio, again, that'll come with time, which will follow uh, which will come with price, which follows value. And as we know, uh, Bitcoin is absolutely jam-packed to the rafters with value. Unbelievable amounts of value. Uh, blockchain growth by network. Again, just having, having a look at uh, B, uh, the bitching chain on this one. And then we've got uh, uh, Bitcoin versus uh, CoreCoin. Global hash rate, seven days. Binance turning up this week. F2 pool still macking it hard. The uh, daddy of the Mac. Mac daddy. And then we've got uh, Huobi's up there this week. BTC.com, that's Jihan, a pool in an apple. We'll have to find out who all these are. I mean, I bet the majority of these are shitcoiners. I mean, like, Binance is a shitcoiner, a shitcoin enterprise, you know? Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I've heard rumors that uh, F2 pool isn't particularly too friendly to Bitcoin. So, interesting. They're all going to have to be uh, taught a lesson, basically. So, uh, global hash rate, 24 hours, Binance massively turning up. Whether they've had like a new shipment or new order of, uh, you know, uh, ASIC miners in, who knows. Uh, then we've got, uh, so this is CoreCoin, 24 hours. So they're usually the same, but it looks like pooling has been pushed down on uh, on CoreCoin. And uh, via BTC turned themselves up along with Antpool, strange one. Uh, and here we've got uh, the bitching chain. So again, like, you know, Antpool, but Hathor still the biggest uh, miner on your chain. If Hathor is the biggest miner on your chain, you've got problems. <laughs> if it's not the Bitcoin chain, oh my goodness. And uh, here we go, this is Bitcoin. All right, here we go. Right, so we've got Tau, Binance still wanting a bit, you know, for whatever reason. Um, Hathor's on there, Hathor's actually Hathor's mining blocks. SBI Crypto again, I mean, I think they're friendly to, uh, to Bitcoin. Norpool, Mempool, via BTC, Huobi, and then we've got uh, BTC.com and F2Pool maybe gesturing on there. Don't know, don't know what BTC.com are doing on there now that we know there's Jihan. But anyway, there we go. So time to look at the, uh, the blockchain working live in front of our eyes. None of the other chains have any of these metrics like this to look at because they simply don't care. They don't want anybody to know what they're doing. Uh, it is literally only Bitcoin that is open and transparent to everyone so that everyone can see it. The smartest people in the room are in Bitcoin, hence graphics like this so we can actually all see what is going on. So this is Bitcoin Blocks Live, even though it's frozen. We'll just simply uh, refresh that, loading up. So you can see in the uh, top right hand corner, it says transactions per second. So at the moment, there's only like <laughs> one transaction every two seconds by the looks of it. But uh, you, I have actually seen that as high as 3000 transactions a second. So, I mean, just think, um, you know, what uh, Visa and MasterCard are uh, only capable of doing, like 1,800. And, uh, and Bitcoin has already done uh, already done 3,000. You know, it's absolutely massive. Absolutely massive. Um, and then uh, these uh, vertical rectangular blocks that you can see move along the bottom here. These are the uh, transactions being recognized by the nodes on the, uh, on the network. When the transaction is recognized by the nodes, uh, down the bottom here, where you can see um, yeah, the, you've got the transaction ID, the input, the output, the uh, type, and then the op return. 
Uh, and then once the transaction arose, transactions are recognized by the nodes on the network, they're thrown into the meme pool. When they're in the meme pool, the transactions are then competed for by the payment processors, which are the miners who compete for the transaction to win the transaction, put it in a block, build the block, and then win the Coinbase of the block, which is obviously Bitcoin. Um, so you can actually see, I mean, uh, relatively small blocks, but I mean, um, still, a, you know, um, uh, quite quite a good chart there seeing the various different blocks on it in the uh, in the highlighted rectangular block below that you've got the hash number of each block the height who it was mined by the size the time and date the transaction count and the total fee so in this um, block there was a 10.65 megabytes there was a transaction at 27,000 transactions and total fees in the block of uh, six dollars and fifty nine so um, as we have been uh, told by Tao what they are hoping to do, so let's just uh, have a look at this, uh, these images. Actually, you know what, I should, I should really send these images to myself uh, and look at these every day just to remind people for, uh, for newbies that might be watching this show for the first time. Uh, where are, uh, just gonna find these um, images that I posted here that uh, Tau, uh, these are the ones we want, particularly this one. Uh, yeah, yeah, th this will do. Right, so um, as we just saw, so this is the start of, uh, of Bitcoin, so 2009, and then we had the uh, the block reward halving, which happens every 210,000 blocks, and then we've got the second one, and we've had the third, so uh, they started with, uh, let me think, I think it was 50 Bitcoins, 50 Bitcoins uh, um, per block, which was every 10 minutes um, for the first 210,000 blocks, then that went down to uh, 25, then it went to uh, 12.5, then it went to 6.25, and then there is another um, block reward scheduled uh, very soon. I probably could do with finding out when that is, actually. Um, but there, uh, but Tao here are expecting the crossover around quarter one 2021, which is next year. Next year. Uh, which is... What the few days away now oh my goodness me so going back to look at this we can see the uh the total fees of that particular block were just uh was just six dollars 59 so there has to be a huge volume of transactions in order for the uh, the total fees in the block to actually um to surpass the block reward and the block reward of uh, 6.25 bitcoins roughly works out about a thousand dollars so I mean, there has to be a huge volume of transactions coming on chain. If you consider that uh, uh, twenty-seven thousand transactions only uh, accommodates to uh, six dollars fifty-nine, yeah. So this is what we're expecting next year: absolutely massive, uh, huge scaling, um, which is extremely exciting because when you have a scale, it means that the payment processors, which are the miners. Um, can then economically sustain themselves just from the utility of the network. They're no longer preying on uh, number go up or, uh, you know, uh, scarcity made number go up as the block reward happens. Well, if the block reward continually gets cut in half, by, by uh, 2140, <laughs> there are no Bitcoins left. There's no halving coming up. So then what? How are the, how are the miners going to sustain themselves if there is no block reward left? Well, they can't. The network collapses. And that's what none of these shitcoiners get. Which is why we say shitcoiners, shit for brains. <laughs> it's really not hard to figure out. You're just kind of like, you need to look past the end of your nose. Just like a little bit further than that, really. That's the uh, crackers. Uh, but uh, let's have a look at one of our other charts here. So this is a BitInfo charts. Again, we've got XRP trying to justify themselves because they're an absolute scam coin. Like literally, uh, all all Ripple Labs are doing is dumping XRP on unsuspecting customers to uh, basically try and finance their loss-making business. That's literally all they do. It's absolutely outrageous. And we'll see a uh, we'll see a ridiculous interview from from Brad Garlinghouse in just a minute on uh, on YouTube when we get into it. Um, but these are some interesting metrics here. So like transactions, like last 24 hours, all chains here. So it's not just the Bitcoin chain, it's all of them. Uh, if you go to the rich list, you could got a drop down list of all the uh, wallets uh, and you can see how many Bitcoin and shitcoin are in each. But if we go to BitInfo charts, we can see the, uh, the highlighted blue tabs on the left. Again, you can use various metrics, but we'll go to uh, av um, uh, transactions, average uh, for 24 hours, we'll go to a log. We'll take Dogecoin Axe as an absolute piece of crap. 
uh, and uh, we'll obviously put Bitcoin in there because that's the main one that we want to see. We'll add Bitchin just for lulls and we'll go over three years. Here we go. So going back to this, uh, going back to the picture that I had up there to start with, which was this one. There we go. So um, you can see that Bitcoin has got its uh, Genesis block. Oh, well, it's starting point at the at the Genesis block. The chain continues. However, you can see the various name changes uh, and when the ticker symbol changed and when the pro and when the price changed on this chart. So you can see that Bitcoin started here on this chart uh, with the uh, with the ticker symbol BSV. And look at that. You can see it's Bitcoin because you can see the number of transactions absolutely rocketing past all of these shit coins. So literally, we've just got Ethereum left, and the only reason like we've got Ethereum left is because they've got all this DeFi crap on there. Literally, DeFi gives us no value whatsoever. It's an absolute joke, but shit corners wouldn't understand this. And we'll just put XRP in there for lulls, because uh, they'll be doing a whole load of wash trading at the moment, trying to justify themselves. So uh, XRP is in green, uh, and uh, Bitcoin is in uh, a turquoise blue. So it looks like kind of like when we were close. There we go. Um, Bitcoin had uh, 364,000. XRP had 1.19 million. And uh, Ethereum just uh, just about well, like 1 million. So, But I mean, it's just all the transactions on XRP. It's just an absolute joke at the moment. It's hilarious. And let's look at the shitcoin market because this is the talk of the town at the moment. Here we go. Oh, shout out to people in the chat box. I can see uh, Richard uh, Richard Leeches in there, uh, Shelly Mac and KP Dad. Here we go. KP Dad says, uh, I was missing the goodness, but I'm here now. <laughs> Talking about goodness, I've actually got some uh, mulled wine uh, waiting for me upstairs when I finish this show. Lovely, lovely. Haven't had, haven't had any of that this year. Mm. So, here we go. So, last time I was looking at CoreCoin, it was like it just passed like 28,000. Uh, you know, and then so then obviously it's dropped from a uh, 28,200 down to uh, 26,000, then it went up to 27, and now it's going back down again. You know, but I mean, it's an absolute piece of crap. Honestly, there's no value in any of this whatsoever. It's just absolutely hilarious. Um, yeah, you got the likes of uh, Michael Saylor. Just Michael Saylor is doing to Corecoin what Roger Ver did for B Crash when there was the first hash war. And we all know what's happened to Roger now. Completely insignificant. Nobody pays any attention to me. Nobody, nobody gives the monkeys about what he's got to say because they've all asked for his price predictions and they've all been completely wrong. You know, again, he's and we all know now. We all know now that he has got no fundamental understanding of what Bitcoin is. You know, and then he had the audacity to ask me about what BSV was. I, I felt like saying to him, "Well, uh, do you know what Bitcoin is?" <laughs> that's what BSV is. Do you know who Satoshi Nakamoto is? Well, he designed Bitcoin. Well, that's why it's called Bitcoin Satoshi's Vision. It's kind of uh, clues in the name, mate. But again, he's a shit corner. So shit corner is shit for brains. Wouldn't expect him to have figured that out anyway. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's cool coin. Yeah. Makes my eyes bleed looking at prices. Literally, it's such a waste of time. Price, uh, if you're looking at price, it's already too late. You know, price is the last thing to move. Price is the end result of all the effort that's come in beforehand. So that's why you need to look at all the other statistics that we were looking at at the, uh, the beginning of the show. But uh, yeah, there we go. But I mean, yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a proof of stake blockchain. Like it just, it won't be able to economically sustain itself. It absolute bollocks. Literally, there, it can only be Bitcoin. It can only be the Bitcoin network. Everything will be built on Bitcoin. Like I literally, I can't, I cannot, I cannot stress this enough. Like literally everything will be on Bitcoin, the whole lot. Because Bitcoin is the only genuine digital currency and therefore it's the only one that can economically sustain a blockchain. All these others are just simply centralized networks, you know, um, trying to find efficiency through uh, you know, blockchain technology, which is the growth of the chain, but it still doesn't take away the fact that it's uh, centrally controlled. Um, it's, uh, it's as simple as that. So, uh, so yeah. And uh, on that note, uh, I need to get some mold wine. I've been going for one hour, 40 minutes. Epic, need to edit edit, edit this video now, can't talk. So uh, yeah, we'll leave it there. Hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, as ever, be aware, take care, stay safe out there. Joy given, same time tomorrow. Catch you later. Buy BSV.live, the best place to buy Bitcoin SV online.
Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and watch the full episode on Streamanity for just 20 cents. Go to www.satoshi.tv. See the link in the description below. Bitcoin. One world, one chain. Yeah! One vision.